Welcome back. So this is the second video in the JavaScript interview question series. This one we want to look at using async await and how that affects the order or the sequence in which your code runs. So let's take a look at this uh, problem here. What we want to figure out is what is the resulting output? Is it 2 then 3, 1 then 3, 1 then 2, 2 then 1? Which of those is the correct output that we're going to get from this? Try to do this without actually running the code and then we're going to come back and talk about what the correct answer is and why. So I'd like you to pause the video for just one second and figure out your answer to this and then come back and we will talk about the solution. Okay, welcome back. So when we run this code, let me open up the console here. When we run this code, we find that the actual answer is 1, then 2. So this one right here, this is the correct answer. So let's take a look at why that's the correct answer. So it's not going to be either of these. So we'll put some X's beside those just as reminders. Okay, so we're setting num equal to 0 at the very beginning. So we've initialized it as 0. Then we're defining the function, we're declaring this function increment. Inside of there, what we're intending to do is take the number, the global one, and then add two to that. Now we're saying await two. Okay, that's gonna make this pause because what await does is it basically wraps this inside of a promise. So if I were to to promise.resolve2. That's the same thing as writing await2. So basically we've just we've paused this for a moment. Now, below this function, we're calling this function. But because of this delay, this console log inside of the function is not going to run immediately because of the await. That means we move on to the next one. By putting this inside of a promise, we've set it aside to be run later. The rest of the main stack is gonna run. So down to the next line, num equals num plus one. Now, another way of writing this, this is really just a shorthand for writing num equals num plus one. And that's gonna become important in just a minute. So at this point, all we know is that num is zero. We haven't actually finished this line of code. We're awaiting the result of this. So down here, zero plus one, zero equal, or zero plus one is one, and that's what gets assigned into here. So at this point right here, num is equal to one. That's what we're gonna output. So that sort of leaves us down to these two right here. And then back up here, why do we get two and not three? And that's where understanding this notation as opposed to this becomes important. When we're writing this, this is just a shorthand way of writing num equals num plus await2 or num plus promise.resolve2. This zero right here is what's going to be sitting here waiting. This is going to be replaced with a zero. So this line of code Really, what happens is we run this, this line of code becomes zero plus waiting for a two. Then we do this line of code, which changes num to one. We write that out. Then the await is finished. We're done our main stack. We come back here. The rest of this is going to run. The two gets added to the zero. And then this becomes an output of two. So a few things in few things going on here, a sync and a wait, understanding that there is a delay because what we've done is we've wrapped the result inside of a promise. The promise has put it aside and that brings us back to the main stack. The rest of the main stack finishes. Then we come back up here and understanding that this syntax is really this. This is what's running under the hood. All right. So I hope that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down in the comments. I will leave this as a link to a code just in the description. You can download that and play around with it. 
And as always, thanks for watching.